Hello YouTube from the Maniac Guy up here in Maine again. So just coming to you real quick and I uh, want to talk to you for a minute about Chaga. So I'm out doing a little bit of hiking today and I'm actually on a little bit of a Chaga hunt. Now this is a tree that I've harvested previously uh, a few years ago and uh, it's it's starting to come back. It looks like somebody else has visited this tree at some point uh, because you can see where I harvested here. This is where I took off a pretty good chunk. Somebody's been along and gotten into that again because it's not really reforming that well. But they did kind of leave this little portion that's frozen into the tree down here. If you can see that at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest this, this chunk out here. You never want to harvest it right down to the tree and take it all out. Of course, I'm using my tomahawk here, my sog tomahawk. It's a voodoo. But uh, anyway, so... Chaga, uh, yeah, I'm going to get harvesting on this, and then I will talk to you guys a little bit about Chaga some more, and uh, I'll show you some, some pieces that I previously harvested, and uh, we'll get into that a little bit. So, all right, well, I'm going to get to work here and uh, get this Chaga off the tree. Okay, so this is the piece that I just got off from the tree right there. You guys can see it's kind of a amber color down here. The best time to harvest this stuff is the closer to zero on the temperature uh, that you can get, the better. Because it just traps more nutrients and more nutrients in there. This is where I just took it off the tree. Notice I, I did leave some on the tree so it can it can regrow on there. And uh, we've been uh, down without wind chill 4 to 11 degrees uh, the last few nights. It's been way below zero uh, with wind chill. So, perfect chaga weather out here. So, there's that. All right, so, just thought I'd uh, show you here while I'm out here. Um, so, as you're looking at the trees in the winter, it's a little hard to tell sometimes. You do not want to get chaga if you do find it from a dead birch tree because it's not going to have, it's not going to have any of the nutrients that you're looking for. It's not going to hurt you, but it certainly isn't going to have the health benefits either. So, as I'm walking along, obviously we see a birch tree here. Unfortunately, there's no chaga on it. Typically, chaga will start forming when a tree has been damaged at some point. Uh, what you want to do is you want to look at the top. And this time of year, of course, at least in, in like New England climates, uh, you're not going to have leaves on anything. Look at this old grandfather of a tree here. Uh, so everything kind of has that dead look to it, but you can see if there's healthy wisps, there's another birch right there, healthy wisps up at the top of the tree, uh, where quite possibly there's, you know, I mean, you can, I'm sorry, you can tell that, the, that, that tree is alive in the, in the summer and in the spring, well, it's alive now, but in the spring it will, it will actually start to sprout leaves and, and show you signs of life. So as you're hunting for chaga, you want to find healthy birch trees, uh, and that's where you're going to want to find it. You do not want to take your chaga off from a cherry tree, uh, because a cherry tree chaga will actually have uh, arsenic in it, and uh, that'll that'll poison you. So, but birch uh, birch chaga, so healthy for you. Uh, I'll talk about that here in a little bit, but um, just wanted to point that out really quick. The sun. As you can see, it's starting to get kind of low in the sky, so I'm going to call it good here in a minute and uh, probably start heading out before I get uh, get in the dark too bad here because I was foolish and did not bring a flashlight, so I do have a sidearm, so that'll be okay if things get too, too crazy out here, run into any critters, but uh, yeah, I'd rather not have to find my way out of here in the dark, so all right, well, as I, as I said, stay stay tuned. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling on this video here, um, just kind of plodding along, and I uh, wanted to bring you guys out with me on a chaga hunt. So uh, stay tuned, and I'll show you some chaga that I've got at home, up in the study, and talk to you a little bit more about chaga. So, all right, guys, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, and thanks for continuing watching the video. Uh, here we are uh, through the magic of videography and YouTube, video editing, and uh, back at the house after the chaga hunt. First of all, I uh, just apologize if the first half of the video I was out in the woods, and, and usually my son does most of the videoing, so probably the first part of this video was vertical, and the last part's horizontal. This is the way I like to 
to film for those of you that are watching on a computer or something like that. But uh, again, usually my son does most of the videography, so that's what happens when I try to stick my hands in it. So anyway, uh, thanks for continuing watching, and uh, Chaga. So back at the house, I uh, decided to come out in the backyard, set up the table, uh, bring the dog out, and just uh, get the dog running around here, and just uh, talk to you guys about Chaga. So... You guys kind of saw in the first part of the video what we're looking for. This is some. Uh, this is actually the chaga I took off that tree uh, in the video. Uh, was actually like a week ago. I'm going to be honest. I just haven't had time to put this together uh, as I wanted to. Just things come up. So anyway, uh, this is when you do harvest chaga. You want to let it dry for uh, right about a week. Uh, sometimes a couple of weeks. You got to first. You got to break it up and. Uh, then you just gotta let it set, set on a shelf or something like that and just uh, wait till all the moisture gets out of it. It goes from being a dense, hard, dark to this kind of golden light, almost like a foam. So what is chaga? Chaga is uh, chaga is a, a mushroom um, and I don't know all the specifics on it. Uh, it is classified as a mushroom. Uh, definitely not like your mushrooms, your portobellas or anything like that that I would consider. As a matter of fact, when it's on the tree, as you guys saw, it doesn't look like a mushroom at all. Uh, certainly doesn't take like, taste like a mushroom. Uh, in, in terms of taste, what does it taste like? Uh, it tastes, uh, I've heard some people say that it kind of tastes like uh, if you were to make a coffee tea. Um, I guess that's semi-accurate. I usually uh, keep my natural and either uh, sweeten it with honey or uh, like local honey or stevia. But uh, the big thing about this, this is called, this is basically, it's called the king of medicinal mushrooms. And so some of the stuff, uh, got a little cheat sheet uh, that I pulled here off on the side, just some stuff I pulled offline. Uh, some of the health benefits that uh, that are, are known for chaga is uh, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, some of the highest antioxidants actually known to man at this time, even more than the blueberry. It's very antioxidant rich. Uh, see if I can read what these guys have here. Immunostimulating, uh, anti-hyperglycemic, so balances blood sugar, uh, anti, well, it's a pain reliever, basically, uh, it's anti-ulcer, uh, it's uh, considered to be an anti-mutagen, so it can actually shrink uh, cancer cells or foreign cells in your body, uh, so basically, yeah, this stuff is, uh, like I said, the king of the medicinal mushrooms. And, and you can pretty much go anywhere online and find this. This stuff has been used for thousands of years. Uh, it's it's something that you just have to do Google searches on, on Chaga, and it's just literally everywhere. So uh, this is some of the uh, Chaga that I've harvested in the past. Now, when you're doing this, my favorite way to make Chaga is actually in a crock pot. And I will take hunks about, I'll break this up more with my tomahawk before I use it. I'll take chunks like yay size and I'll throw about three of these in a, you know, five, six, seven, eight quart, uh, whatever crock pot. And I'll let them simmer on low. You don't want to boil it because you kill all the good bacteria. You kill everything you want that's in this. Um, and I'll let it simmer for 10 to 12 hours. And then shut it off and let it set for, you know, another couple hours while it's cooling. And uh, and then I'll actually put it in. I've got some some dark glass bottles, some 64-ounce bottles. And I'll fill up a few of those and put them in the fridge. And, and my wife and I and my son uh, will drink the chaga. Um, and then you can heat it on the stove or however you want to heat it after that. Or just drink it cold like an iced tea kind of sort of. And... Uh, so that's how I make it. That's that's by far the best method I found to make it. Now you can eat this black stuff, uh, which again you can just do a Google search on what all this is called. But they say that uh, this black stuff here on the outer layer is actually very nutrient rich, and uh, this inner stuff, man, that's just that's just gold right there. Um, it's I love chaga. Now when you do harvest it, one thing to keep in mind: it won't hurt you really. But I'll just take a knife and I'll scrape off the uh, the birch bark from it. So, because you really don't need that in your tea, and it kind of makes it taste a little bit bitter. So, I will scrape off the birch bark. But, um, pretty much, other than that, you just break this stuff up and you cook it. Uh, or, and you, uh, and you simmer it down in the crock pot. Now, you can also pulverize it in like a mill grinder, uh, and you can use the powder. Um, there's just several methods. Some people even put it in their food. 
Um, I would really encourage you, if you don't really know much about chaga, and my wife hates mushrooms, by the way, uh, but she actually, uh, she, she really, it took some convincing to get her to try chaga, but she really enjoys her chaga. So, and just, it, it, it actually, you get like, uh, in my opinion, in my mind's eye, what I feel, huh, my truth, excuse me, uh, but what I feel is, uh, I actually get an energy kick out of this stuff, um, to be honest with you, because of all the, all the antioxidants in it, it just really boosts your system, and uh, if I'm starting to feel under the weather a little bit, and I drink chaga for a few days, uh, I tell you, there's, there's just nothing quite like it, um, it helps with aches and pains, and uh, and again, you know, if you're a blood pressure or really anything, whatever ails you, if you're drinking chaga, it will help to counteract that. Um, and it, it is medicinal. This is literally the king of medicinal mushrooms. So it's, uh, definitely, uh, yeah, I really don't have too much else to say about it, but chaga, um, it kind of in keeping with, uh, my outdoor activities and the things that, that I like to do and, and I, I always enjoy posting my, my outdoor activities, hikes, shooting, uh, knives, hiking. I think I already said that. But I just love to share all this stuff with you guys. Uh, anything that I would like to share with, with a friend or anything like that or anything that anybody might ask me, hey, what do you know about this or know about that? Uh, what a great uh, outlet this is for my son and I. Uh, my son loves to do the editing, and, and uh, he encouraged me for a long time because he wanted to do this together. So this is a project that we do together. And uh, I got to tell you, I just... I love sharing with you guys. So again, uh, thank you for thank you for joining me on another adventure. And uh, hopefully, you glean some good information. If you're interested about chaga, uh, feel free to post if you have any questions. And uh, again, until next time, thanks for joining and have a good one. Maniac guys, take care. Bye.